Hey y'all, if you're new here, my name is Sarah and I am a fourth year teacher that recently moved from first to second grade. Something that was requested to talk about on here is my teacher resource drive. So if you follow me on my other platforms like Instagram and TikTok, you already know what this is. If you have no idea, please keep watching because it is awesome for new and upcoming teachers. If you are a student teacher or a brand new teacher, I created a teacher resource drive two years ago. It is a Google Drive that I share with you via email and basically it has every single resource that I've ever created and used for myself in my classroom in one Google Drive and I share it with teachers. To be transparent, I do not have a Teachers Pay Teachers. I really wanted to share it this way for a couple different reasons. So I wanted to share it this way because I'm still helping educators, but at a fraction of the price. Um, usually when you go on Teachers Pay Teachers, you pay per resource. With my Google Drive, you pay one time and you are locked in at the rate that you pay. So if you're an OG and you paid back in January of 2021, you got it for $5. And now there are over 150 resources in there that I have handcrafted and made myself. And now the price is $15 because I have added more over the last two years. But if you're an OG and you bought it and purchased it two years ago, you literally got like the best deal, the best deal out of anybody. You bought it at the right time. Um, another reason I do it this way is for my own purposes. So I phrase this as a donation. So by donating to my teacher resource drive through Venmo, and then sending me your email address, that's how I share it with you. Once you have access to it, you never lose access. If you have a email that you lose access to, just DM me on Instagram or shoot me an email and let me know and I will reshare it with you. You do not have to repay if you have already purchased it. And the great thing about doing it through Venmo is I can look up your email in my um, email and I can see if you've bought it before because your email will come up because it was in the Venmo message and my Venmo is connected to my email. So the purpose of this video today is not to talk about what it is, but more so to talk about what's in there because a lot of teachers have been asking me, are there things for my grade level? Are there things that are editable? What's even in there? And so if you don't wanna have time to watch this video, if you go on my Instagram, I have a whole story highlight of teacher resource drive and it shows everything, whenever I add something in, I usually post it on my Instagram story so you guys can see what it looks like and what I'm adding and where to find it. And then I will save it to that highlight so that you can always look back because sometimes people come in they're new and they're like, what's in this? And you can just go there and look and kind of browse through everything. But I'm gonna show you maybe like 10 or 15 of my favorite resources resources that I've created and put in there in case you're wondering, is it good for my grade level? Is it a right fit for me? Is it worth the money? And let me just say that I try and make things non-grade specific, but sometimes because I am a first and now second grade teacher, there are things that are grade level specific, but I've had anywhere from preschool teachers all the way up to high school teachers purchase this at any given point in the last two years. And I haven't had any negative feedback, honestly. Um, I will just say that if you don't like it, then you don't have to keep using it, but it is something that helps support me and it is something that I like to do to support other teachers. Another very common question I get is how do I access the drive if I already own it? Best way to do that is to type in my email, which is sarahpoquette15 at gmail.com. I share it via email, so you always have that paper trail. You can always type it into your email and you will find it and then you can reopen it that way. Versus if I shared it with you and I went into the Google Drive and hit share, we don't have that paper trail, if that makes sense. I'm gonna turn it over to my computer so that you can see what you would see if you purchased the drive. So here's the inside of my TikTok teacher folder. That's what I called it two years ago. Now I just kind of refer to it as the teacher resource drive because it has nothing to do with TikTok. That's just how I started promoting it. Um, and in here, in this drive, you have all these different folders. So assessments I've created, classroom management, daily five is a literacy curriculum I used last year, digital resources for slides because I use slides every day, documents for student teachers. This, is, this was a huge one when I started it. I don't know if people utilize it as much anymore. First week of school activities, foundations is a spelling slash grammar program I've used in the past, math, newsletter templates, organizational options for things, random stuff that I didn't really know how to categorize, responsive classroom things, science and social studies documents, wonders. I now use wonders as my curriculum, so I don't really put into daily five anymore. Now I put more things into wonders and writing. Depending on what kind of stuff you do in your classroom, you might utilize some of these things, you might utilize all of them, you might utilize only a few. Um, again, that's why I do kind of a lump sum so that as I add things, you don't have to pay more for it, you just reap all the benefits of purchasing and anything I add, um, you get access to. 
I'm just gonna show you a couple of things that I really love in the drive that I created very intentionally and am excited to share with you guys. Like I said, there are over 150 things in here, so I'm not gonna show you everything, but just a quick glance at some of my favorites that I think make it worth the donation. So something I'm really passionate about is Responsive Classroom. If you don't know what that is, um, I can definitely make a video on it, but basically these are our daily affirmation slides. I put this first slide on my slides and then we do five a day. So there's 25, which means that you have five for each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We just say them as a class during morning meeting. These are a great way to start off your day. They were not meticulous to make. I made them in Canva, but it's just already made for you, which is kind of the communities of teachers pay teachers. And that's the same thing I go for with my teacher drive. I'm not really making anything super hard or challenging. I just did the work for you, so it's just that convenience factor, but these are awesome. My students love them. Something else I'm very passionate about is Closing Circle, which is another part of Responsive Classroom. This is great because you can meet, sit in a circle at the rug, and either talk about your day, so something as simple as you know, do a self-check-in about how your day was, if you do first day feelings, you could change your post-it note on your first day feelings. Or you can do simple, cute, would you rather questions. You can talk about rules and why they're important. You can talk about kindness, sharing something that made you smile. There are some really great prompts in here. Like I said, I have 68 and they're all editable. So if you don't like the questions, but you like the slide format with the smiley faces, or if you like the questions, but you need to get rid of my Bitmoji, you can easily take those out. Last thing I'll show in this folder is logical consequences. I get a lot of questions about what they are. So these slides talk about what is a logical consequence. They talk about why we use them and it gives the different examples of break it, fix it, and then some kid-friendly examples. We review this at the beginning of the year and we also reviewed it when we came back from break because sometimes we just need a good refresher. And this is how our teacher helps us. So I give one friendly reminder. Second reminder, I preview the logical consequence. Third reminder, I implement the logical consequence. These are not editable, but again, you can take what you want from these and copy and paste them. You can easily drag and drop and take information off of it and put it in your own slides. I just made them for you in Canva and they are really helpful for beginning of the year and after long breaks. This is a very, again, just bland resource, but it's nice because I've done the work for you. This did take me some time in Canva. I made editable slides that are groovy themed. So if you scroll through them, they are editable. So if you don't like some of the pictures, you can take them off. But I just thought these were so cute. I use these for my daily slides and then sometimes I will edit them out if we want a different theme. But there are tons of options for groovy theme slides if that is your class theme. Similarly, if you like the themed slides, I made like 30 winter ones this past week and I put all those in there as well. And then sometimes I really like to add like cute, fun clip art to them. So on the last slide, again, these are editable. I added all of the clip art that I thought was super cute to put in the slides. Another favorite folder of mine is the classroom management folder. So I created these a while ago, so they haven't been updated in a while, but these are some fun reward or tickets that you can give out. I also have updated ones that are a little more cute. <laughs> um, these are ticket based though. So the other ones don't have point values on them. I started doing tickets with my students. So now their coupons are worth a certain ticket amount. So I have different ones that I try not to make them materialistic. Most of them are experiential or things that I already have in the classroom are super easy to do. So I added these to the resource drive. People also went nuts for my viral star student or secret student um, video a couple years ago. So I made a star student template and a secret student template. And sometimes when you've gone through every student, they've all been a secret student. I made these cute level two cards. I always used to tell my students that when they are a level two, it means that they need to be even more expected and more behaved. So I have those as well. Obviously you can tell I just love slides. That's what a lot of my stuff in here is. I did these classroom reset slides. So I left them blank so you guys could fill them out as a class when you're talking about them. But when we came back from break, we needed to refresh and review all of these things. So I made these and put them in the drive so that you can edit them how you want. And you can also just talk as a class and fill it in as you go. If your school doesn't require homework, or maybe you're trying to think of a way to encourage homework without necessarily requiring it and printing things out, 
We came up with this in my old school. It's a homework menu for the week, and then you can put in the date. These are editable. And then you can work on, you can list skills that you're working on at school and have students choose four squares to complete during the week, put an extra to the ones that they've completed, and then return it on Friday. And then parents can sign it if you want. Completely editable, but I just thought it was great to put in there because it's such a great idea to make homework not so much mandatory, but at least it gives students ideas of things they can be working on. Like we're working on long E, write 10 long E spelling words in chalk on your sidewalk or find a book and look for beginning blends in your book or something like here's a math problem turn your paper over and solve it two different ways we do not do homework at my new school but at my old school we did this and it was a pretty big hit okay this one's for if you're specifically a student teacher I put in all of my documents from student teaching. So my teacher work sample, I did my lesson plan examples. I put in an example of a teacher feedback form if you wanna know what that looks like. I put in lesson templates. I put in a cover letter example. I put in a resume letter example more just copies of lesson plans. This is all for if you're a student teacher and you're looking to get some insight on how to lesson plan or what feedback might look like or teacher work samples, any of that, it's all in here for student teachers. Some really fun beginning of the school year stuff. I know that we're past the beginning of the school year, but I love this activity. It's very kid friendly. Super basic, just get to know our class slides. This is a super fun game at the beginning of the year, which is why it's in there, but you could play this at any point. It's called the best game. So you have groups and you call on people and say, all right, we need the tallest from each group. And then it goes to the next slide and it says the tallest thumb. So then they put their thumbs next to each other and they see who has the tallest. It's cute because they think you're going to go for the tallest person, but then you ask for something like that. You might want to say, all right, I need the longest. And they pick somebody and then it's, I need the longest who can have the longest staring contest. They're just really cute. I mean, these did not take long to make again they are editable it's just a really fun game to play at the beginning of the year but honestly if you need something quick you could play it at any time and not really relevant right now but i do just love these meet the teacher templates i thought they turned out so cute if you do monthly newsletters all you have to do is add text box and then you can put whatever you want i left the tops open so that you can make the categories whatever you want and then you can just add text box to add in your information and that's the same thing for this one as well. You just add text box to put the words that you want above, and then you can add your information down below. Super cute. Again, I made these on Canva. Last few things I'll show are writing based because again, these are not great specific. So scribble writing is great because it's just an easy writing prompt for them to be able to take whatever they want from the picture and make it into their own drawing and then write about it. Again, not grade level specific, but you can cut these out and laminate them and in their centers, if you have bins or if you have drawers, you can put blank lined paper and just put one of these cards in there and have them pick the writing prompt and write about it. And you could add more to these if you wanted. These are just some that I came up with. Last one I'll show you is the Writer's Workshop book. They put their title up here and then their name and then it's just literally blank lined paper with the foundations lines and you can have them fill in whatever they wanna write about. It's a great, easy, finishers like if I'm done early task I didn't count but I feel like I probably just showed you like 15 to 20 of my favorite things again there's over 150 things in there I just want to show you some of the things that I take the most pride in or like the most out of there as a second grade teacher tried to show you non-grade level specific things so that anybody can really benefit from it but I just want to say that I continually add to this so I make new resources every single month so if there was a lot that you didn't see in there that was that interesting to you just know that i continually add things and if you purchase it now and you donate now then it's possible that more things will get added that you do want if you ever have any questions about it like you can't find something in the drive and you're looking for it specifically best way to contact me is through instagram dms that is where i will respond the quickest if you think about it the value of these resources is very minimum if you pay the 15 dollars donation because right now it's 150 things at least in there i count ever so often and um that's 10 cents a resource so not bad. For those of you that have already joined it, thank you for supporting me. I really appreciate it. And for those of you who haven't or on the fence, again, please reach out and be happy to help. Um, a couple just disclaimers with the teacher drive. One, when you get added, you cannot share it with anybody else. So please do not share resources with other people. Second, 
if you are in it, please make a copy of something and share it to your own drive and you know move it to your own drive versus making a copy of it in the drive and then editing it in there. I have to delete those. Same thing with if you make a, um, if you edit the original document, I have to delete it and then re-add it in because now nobody else can use it. So please just make sure you're making a copy of things or downloading things before you edit them. And then also please just make sure that you are not deleting anything into the drive nor adding anything into the drive. That's all I have for you today. I'm sure I missed some things, but thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful and insightful. And if you have any questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment and have a wonderful rest of your week.